Welcome back guys for another episode of Six Feet Apart. Uh, we're gonna sit down today with Chris Tasca in Quonset, Rhode Island. Um, Chris owns a private aviation company. He also owns this beautiful 2018 Huracan Performante. Um, so we're gonna sit down, learn about a little bit about his racing history and see how it goes from there. So Chris, thank you for coming to sit down with me. Yeah, great to be here. Uh, of course. So um, it was nice. So uh, just a quick overview for everyone. So we met a couple of weeks ago, Austin and Carlos, a couple guys from Squad, invited right. me down to cruise to Newport. Right. Yeah. And I was like, okay, who's going? And they yeah. said, oh, there's a Performante, there's a couple of GT3 RSs. And I was like, oh, absolutely, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, so we went, we cruised. Um, and then we chatted and then decided to do episode six feet apart. Absolutely. So we have Dells. It was a request from you. So can you explain Dells to everyone? Because I have no idea. You just said go get Dells. New England's premier frozen lemonade. Okay. It's the go-to drink, middle of the summer, 90 degrees. Yep. Dells is what cools you down. Okay. I've been drinking it since I was 10 years old. It's delicious. So it's from Rhode Island? Right, yeah. I believe one of the main factories is somewhere in Rhode Island. I know the location in Cranston, Rhode Island, where I was, uh, where I grew up. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's something that I, I've taken in the car. I've had it on the beach. I've taken it on the ball field. Just your go-to iconic Rhode Island classic. Of course, no, so I pulled up and I was like, uh, you said get a Dell's Large. I said, yeah, okay. exactly. So they have 10 flavors. And I was like, I asked the guy, I was like, what's it, like, what should I get? He's like, I don't know, we have 10 flavors. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, Give me a lemonade, I got two, like a raspberry. What, a what flavor orange. do you have? Raspberry or blood orange? Nice, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a classic lemonade guy myself. I'm sure they're all delicious. Awesome. I mean, if I come back down here, I'll definitely try the other flavors. Awesome, but, cool. Yeah, it was good. So Chris, what made you think about getting into aviation? I acquired my pilot's license in 2010, but in full transparency, 1986, Tom Cruise, Top Gun. Put the clip there. <laughs> okay. Um, so give us a quick rundown. So you have a 2018 Performante. Right. Um, how long have you had it? Have you done anything to it? Why did you get into it? Just a brief overview. Right. Yeah, cool. Uh, 2018 Huracan Performante by Lamborghini. Uh, I purchased the car in March of 2019. Uh, so just coming up on uh, 16 to 18 months. Car's fantastic. Car stock. Uh, I put a 3M bra on the car okay. just to protect it here in Rhode Island. Of course. As, you'd ima as you would imagine. Horrible. Yeah, a lot of road rash. But uh, yeah, drive the car hard. We've got a nice little club. Um, big car enthusiast growing up. And uh, at the, um, I'm at the point right now in my career uh, where I've had the opportunity to uh, you know, purchase a Lamborghini. This is my second exotic. And just the car is everything that I thought it could be. Very cool. So yeah. how did you decide on Lamborghini? I mean, I know we've talked briefly and you wanted to kind of mention how someone can get into a Lamborghini. Sure. Yeah, so um, you know, as I was developing, you know, I talk a lot about with my guys too and some of my guys can attest to this. It's all about you know personal and professional development, and they work hand in hand with one another. Of course. So as I was you know as I was working my finances and my compensation, I thought about how I could actually obtain a car like this. Okay. And it started with a Mustang. I purchased a Mustang, uh, a GT 350R, and then I worked my up from a Mustang to a 911, and then from a 911 to a 458 Italia. Okay. And then from the 458 Italia to the Performante. Got it. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, because I remember the one time, the first time we met. You were one of the only guys who came up to me and you were asking about my car and it yeah, was yeah, yeah. and I was like, oh, this guy's like, you know, he drives a Lamborghini, he's asking about my car, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and then exactly. you said, you know, you have a Mustang and yeah, yeah. so Chris Tasca right. is kind of in your blood. Exactly. Um, yep. So you, your family owns Tasca Ford? Well? Right, yep, yeah, so my family, uh, my cousins own the Tasca Ford Automotive Group. Okay. It's the largest Ford dealership in New England. Very cool. The second largest Ford dealership, I believe, in the country. Okay. Um, so growing up, yeah, I was a big car salesman, you know, kind of always detailing cars on the weekend. Of course. And growing up with that Shelby GT Cobra feel my whole life. Right. So uh, my, one of my first cars was a 20, one of my first cars was a 2010 Mustang GT. Okay. You know, I put the tires on that, the tint, the rims, the whole bit, the exhaust, and I've kind of worked my way up from there. But uh, I, again, as I've developed, I've worked my way from going straight down the track to getting into something that curves a little bit more. And, right. You know, the Performante does a good, great job of that. Of course, yeah. very cool. So speaking of getting into something more, kind of working in development, so your personal career and how you kind of do what you do. So you own a private jet company? I do, yeah. So I own a company called Alliance Aviation. Um, I co-founded it with my two partners uh, when we partnered back in 2016. Cool. So we specialize in private jet charter jet card membership, and aircraft management and sales. Awesome. We've also got a division of operations, maintenance, and parts. Cool. So kind of like a one-stop shop for private jet travel. 
Awesome, that's yeah. cool. So you guys do typically like a membership type thing, I think you were saying? Exactly, yeah, you can purchase a block of hours. That's like our main goal, where our customers purchase a block of hours with us, and they simply debit away at the hours as they fly. Cool. Think of it like uh, aircraft ownership. A okay. private jet card is when you purchase a block of hours in a specific type of aircraft, and you simply debit away at the hours as you fly, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I partnered with uh, those guys back in uh, late 2016, and we've just been building it since. Cool. So you guys pretty much do a lot of domestic stuff or international, a little bit of both? Yeah, so we do both. Um, we pride ourselves on responsiveness, so we can pretty much have an airplane anywhere in the country in eight hours notice or less, Very cool. and internationally approximately 24 hours. Okay. So yeah, we have, we have got customers that fly from New York to London, New York to Paris, the islands, Asia, et cetera. Very cool. So yeah. I know, I, I kind of, I interviewed a while ago with a private jet company, and I know some of the ins and outs, but so, do you sometimes also do if you know if you need to get a plane from Rhode Island to Spain, for for example? Right, right, yeah. And but the guy is coming from Spain <laughs> yeah, to somewhere yeah. else. You offer that flight to someone for like a discounted yeah, and, and like an that empty as well? leg. Right, yeah, an empty, empty leg. Empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So an empty leg. So um, when I first got in my career, when I started flying, I started flying in 2010. I'm a you personally fly. Right, I'm a pilot. Cool. So I started flying in 2010, and I got into the. Um, into the management and sales side in late 2011. Okay. So basically what an empty leg is, and it's important to understand, an empty leg is when an aircraft that's positioned, like say in Spain, flies to London, flies to New York, and is heading back to its home base in Spain. Right. So pretty much it's already paid for to go back. Yep. So using a number of different technologies and platforms, we can market the aircraft to different customers okay. for them to take that back at a significant discount. Got it, got That's it. what an empty leg is. Got it. That's cool. That's a nice way for people to kind of want to test out private jets. Test know. out, yeah, sure. Right, I mean, it's, test still, out, yeah, like, it's still expensive. No, of course. But it's a little it's bit of a discount. Right, you know, exactly. The right. full shebang. Right. That's right. awesome. Yeah, I cool. do, yeah, I eventually at some point want to fly private, just yeah. test it out. Well, you've um, got the guy. Yeah, exactly. You've got, now got the guy. guy, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, very cool. So you fly every year. I know you guys are involved with the Rolex 24 as Right, well? yeah. Yeah, so last year, um, my, my partners and I, we attend the Rolex 24 last year. Okay. Last year, we got involved, we got involved with one of the teams that won, which we were really excited about. Yeah, very We cool. plan on continuing that partnership this year. Uh, but yeah, we were involved with a lot of the IMSA races and most importantly, the Xfinity races. Okay. We've got a uh, we've got a partnership with Corey Roper Racing, okay. where we sponsor one of the trucks. Very cool. So you can look us up on any of the NASCAR channels. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. NASCAR has so, been a great business for us. Interesting. Yeah. That's a weird like collaboration. You I think so, think. right? Like you know, you think from like you know the outside in, the sport seems very you know family friendly, but from the inside out, it's like a very pristine, cutthroat group of people. Like, okay. and again, I say that because like. They want, they're very demanding those customers because they're going from one race to the next right. and they need to maintain their schedule. Right. So obviously using the using a private jet to help them get from point A to point B is something that can help them. Right. Yeah. Very cool. No, it's nice because, I mean, it's nice that you are able to, you know, do what you love and do the car stuff as well as the private jet stuff and even combine right. the both. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so that's cool. So do you actually, have you ever been in any races yourself or do you guys just kind of sponsor a team? Just amateur stuff for now. Trust cool. me, it's on like a very... Just that you seem like the kind of guy yeah, who yeah. want to get in the car. Yeah, yeah, know. I'm a driver. Like I, it drives me nuts not to be in the car. So it's on a very short list for me to get in the car immediately. Okay. Like I, I always want to take, you know, again, me being a pilot and like wanting to take control whenever I can. You know, I definitely want to get into the series, so it's definitely like something that's on the short list. Cool. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah, because I know I know a few guys on the Midwest, they kind of just started with amateur racing and they right. moved up and they keep moving up and it's just, it's something fun. Yeah. It's very time consuming and it right. costs some money, but yeah, you know, yeah. if, if you have some time and you have some money, it's definitely something fun to try out. It's an expensive hobby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's an expensive Cars hobby. in general are expensive. To, to be specific, we sponsored a team for one of the IMSA races and the tires alone were $10,000. For one race. Just for one race. So that's how many sets of tires? I believe it was 20 plus. 20 plus sets of like race compound. Race compound tires. So it was over 80 tires. Jesus. Yeah, so for, for one race, for one team, yeah. for one car. That's crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. That's crazy. It was awesome. I was debating for a very short time <laughs> in a dreamland opening yeah. like a race team or starting a, sponsoring a race team. Right. And um, I was talking to a few people. We have a couple guys from Toronto who come to our events every year. Really cool. Um, and they're all ex race car drivers. Right. So I was picking their brain and we were talking about getting into it and they were saying the budget to like start and sponsor and kind of run a race team is like millions of dollars a year. Easy. Even minor, e like amateur teams, it's like two, three million dollars yeah, a year. Easily, yeah. And the thing is, what's really cool is I see like a lot of my clients, it's a lot of my clients, their hobby, if you will, is cars or okay. automotive, automotive in Auto general. private jet clients. Exactly. Yep. yep. And, and their car collections are mental, 48s, okay. Pistas, Huracans, SVJs. I mean, these guys have the best of the best, and they're still spending like at least a million or two per year 
on their budget for their race team, right. which they're not even doing. Right, right, they right. contract a crew, they contract drivers, and these drivers are like younger guys that have competitively been racing since they were 10 years old. Right, right, right. So yeah, I plan on getting into like one of those amateur settings where there's like a father-son or like amateur pro type of division where I can kind of test my wits out there. Because again, the Sundays in Rhode Island, you know, kind of just don't cut it. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. There's only so much you could do on the Exactly, road yeah, it's a lot of fun. No, it's awesome. Have you ever taken this for a rip on the runway, or they don't really I like have. That? Yeah, you I have. have. Yes, okay. I have. Undisclosed location. Undisclosed location. I'll confidently say that I hit 175 plus. Awesome. And yeah. how, the runway's a mile? Most most runways are a minimum of a mile. Minimum yeah, of a mile. Yeah, minimum okay. of a mile. This mile. This runway was a mile and a half. Very cool. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, have it was fast. Have you ever fat. done roll racing? Fast. Like the sec uh, shift sector or any of those kind of big roll races? Uh, a couple of them. Yeah, a couple. Um, again, my schedule right now, my, when my schedule permits, I get in the car, but unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to do like the Gold Rush Rally yep. or any of the gumball stuff. But that's all in hindsight. Got yeah, it. I definitely want to get that. Very cool. No, because I, I know we were briefly talking about the East Coast run, and I mean, I'd love right. to have you next year. We were talking about it. Right, so right, right. Hopefully, if you're scheduled, limited. Permits. Yeah, limited spots. Right? I know. You sold we that sold, up quick. We wow. sold out this year. It's wow. Crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. So last year we had trouble. I was talking to my girl, and I'm like, listen, like, let's do this run out to Ohio. It's not that many miles on the car, but it's a great group of guys. They do it for a good cause. And then I'm like looking at my schedule and I'm like, man, that's a lot of time away from the computer and my phone. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I got you for one year. Of course. For sure. Looking forward to it. But cool. yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty tough getting that time. And yeah. because we do, typically you have to know it's Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, sometimes Tuesday. So yeah. I, I totally understand. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. But no, I appreciate you sitting down. Thanks for taking the time. And, awesome. Um, let's go for a drive, check out the car and see Definitely. how it sounds. Awesome, brother. Cool. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Six Feet Apart. Uh, we sat down with Chris Tasca of Alliance Aviation and his 2018 Huracan for Monte. Um, we learned a little bit about why he likes to go fast and his involvement in racing. So if you like the video, please like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys next week. Wow,